This is Dr. Afshar. We are showing you a radio frequency ablation on a small saphenous vein. First patient is sterilized. Target vein is located by ultrasound guidance. Once it is located, after small local anesthesia, we're going to gain access to the vein, which is that top dark strip that you see on the monitor. After local anesthesia, the access is gained by a long needle, which will help us introduce a guide wire into the vein. Patient does not feel anything at this point. There is no pain. And as you can see from the flashback, and then we'll confirm on ultrasound, we have gained access into the vein. Then through a series of maneuvers, including a very, very tiny incision, we insert our radio frequency catheter inside the vein, which closes the vein shut that is faulty by thermal ablation or by thermal energy. A very tiny incision. And a microintroducer is introduced into the vein. Then we remove the guide wire and insert our radio frequency catheter. Once again, we check with the ultrasound to make sure that our microintroducer is in the right place. The ultrasound is a great tool to make sure that we are always in the right location and where we are in respect with respect to other structures. Now the radio frequency fiber is inserted to a certain anatomical location depending on where the junctions are, where other veins are and how long the length of the vein is. What you're seeing moving forward and backwards is done to illustrate what the fiber looks like under ultrasound. This is the fiber and the black area around it is the vein that's on top of the monitor. Now we measure, the, that's the tip of the fiber, to a certain anatomical location to ensure safety. Then we bathe the vein with a tumescent, with, a, with an, an anesthesia called tumescent anesthesia, which is a mixture of normal saline, lidocaine, and bicarbonate. This will ensure to keep the area cool keep the area anesthetized, and keep the pH of the fluid that we inject close to the bodily pH for quicker absorption and excretion after the procedure. The white dot that you see in the middle of the screen is the fiber inside the vein. You see that the black area is increasing in size. That is the fluid. The black area is the fluid that we are injecting, which is the anesthetic fluid which once again is normal saline, lidocaine, and bicarbonate. We, we do that all along the length of the vein. So we start from our incision point or insertion point all the way to the tip of the catheter. And once the temperature on our monitor, the temperature around the vein drops, then we know that we have anesthetized the whole length of the vein. Then once that is completed, radio frequency, now here once again you can see that we are insert, injecting fluid on top and below the vein and around the vein. Then the generator is turned on. The temperature increases to 120 degrees Celsius and it counts down for 15 seconds. It holds there for 15 seconds and counts down. That ensures 
that the section of the vein that the catheter is in contact with is closed with thermal energy. We do that every three centimeters or every seven centimeters, depending on the length of the fiber we use and the length of the vein. We do that all along uh, the length of, uh, of the vein and we close the vein shut. Once the whole uh, length is, uh, is ablated, we remove the catheter, patient's leg is cleaned, we apply pressure for, uh, to stop the, the tiny incision from bleeding, we apply a steric strip, no sutures needed, and uh, the patient is instructed to walk 40 minutes a day, starting from the time that the procedure is completed um, for at least two weeks. We put the patient's stocking on and the stocking is supposed to stay on for 48 hours round the clock and one week on in the morning, off at night. That is the Vein Institute protocol. Different institutions have different protocols. And uh, the patient can go back to the normal activity. No pain, no discomfort, no time off their feet, no time away from any activities of daily living after the procedure. Here gauze is played on the very tiny uh, needle pokes or needle uh, holes that we, we made while injecting anesthesia, because if that's not done, then uh, the fluid can ooze out and, and uh, soak the patient's stocking. It's just an inconvenience. These, uh, these, the gauze are removed after about an hour because in about an hour or two or three, at the most, the, all the fluid that we inject inside the leg has been reabsorbed and, and excreted through urine without any problems at all.